There is a plot in the country to enslave every man, woman, and child. Before I leave this high and noble office, I intend to expose this plot. Seven days later, he died. The stuff that's going on around us today just doesn't make any sense. And as we go through this presentation, you'll start to realize why it doesn't make any sense. And that all of this is not by accident. That all of this misery and strife in the world today is actually by design. Why is the world divided like this? It is not by accident. All of this is by very meticulously planned action. It is all done by design through the control systems that run our world. All you gotta do at all times is follow the money. You'll get to the top and discover the Rothschild banking empire and their cronies, the banking families, and what is often referred to as the royal political elite. These families that control the world did not suddenly come into power uh, in the last hundred years. We're talking about thousands of years of royal bloodline control of the world. The Rothschilds and the other banking families pretty much own all the central banks of the world. This is a shock to the system. The central banks of the world, like the Federal Bank of America, the Bank of England, the South African Reserve Bank, the Reserve Bank of Australia, India, Brazil, all the central banks of all the countries of the world do not belong to the people. They are owned private entities that are controlled and owned by the Rothschild banking empire. And they set the norms, the rules, and the financial policies for the countries. And they lend money to the countries, the governments, and the presidents, and the prime ministers, and the ruling parties of the different countries. And this is why we are constantly trapped in the cycle of debt, because the banks that print our money do not belong to its people. What is money really? Well, money is just an idea. It's a piece of paper. It's a tool of enslavement. And what you will learn here is that money is not something that evolved over thousands of years of bartering and trading as a tool that can help humanity prosper. No, it's exactly the opposite. Money was a tool of enslavement that was conjured up a long time ago and introduced as a complete and whole philosophy and a tool of enslavement. It's just a piece of paper that controls our lives. It burns and disappears. Where did money come from? How did money originate? Very few people are actually aware of this. Well, about 6,000 years ago, the first money appeared in a form of clay tablets. This is during the Sumerian Empire. Well, the Sumerian texts tell us about when money first appeared and also when the first royal bloodlines first appeared and we find the emergence of the first kings or the so-called first priest kings and it just so happens that these first priest kings that appeared out of the blue on earth suddenly created all the banks they created their temples and in their temples they started to print these clay tablets which became the first forms of money so, in essence, the temples of these first kings that appeared on earth were the first banks from which the first forms of money were distributed to the people. And nothing has changed in thousands of years. This is really important. So, what if I told you that banks create money out of thin air? Would you be surprised? Well, that's exactly what happens. They have nothing. Money is absolutely useless. It is a piece of paper. It has no backing, and this is why it's called fiat currency. Fiat money. It means nothing. It is valueless. It has no value. The only reason it has value is because we the people think it has value and it's given to us as a piece of paper that has some sort of value and we trade it and use it and go around and kill each other for it and rob banks for it and go to jail for it and do... It controls our lives from the first moment we are born to the last moment as we die. Money controls our lives. Many famous people and smart people and businessmen of the past have been aware of this for a long time. Like this quote from Henry Ford, for example. He said, it's well that the people of the nation do not understand our banking and monetary system. For if they did, I believe there would be a revolution before tomorrow morning. Henry Ford. 
Many people, many great leaders of the past have resisted money, have resisted the bankers. JFK tried to break the America free from the Federal Bank, Federal Reserve Bank stranglehold on the people of the United States. This is a quote seven days from before he died. He says, there is a plot in the country to enslave every man, woman and child. Before I leave this high and noble office, I intend to expose this plot. Seven days later, he died. What you need to know is that JFK actually started to print what became known as the American or the United States note, which is not printed by the Federal Reserve Bank and therefore taking the control away from the Fed. As soon as they, they assassinated him in Dallas in 1963, within two weeks or so, the Fed started to print the American money again, taking that control back. And this happened also with uh, Abraham Lincoln, who 100 years before that started to print the greenback in the United States, making the American people free of all debt. And the greenback was printed by the government, it didn't belong to the Federal Bank or the Rothschild Empire. This was obviously not liked and they could lost control. This is why they shot him and got rid of him, because he didn't play their game. Who controls our governments? Who controls the, the bankers? Who controls what's going on here? Many people around the world call these the puppet masters. We don't know who they are because they don't want us to know who they are. Quote from Mayor Amschel Rothschild, the founding father of the Rothschild Empire in the 1700s. He says, let me issue and control a nation's money and I care not who writes the laws. And that's exactly what has become of the world and our countries. Because through the banking institutions, they control everything. Think about how money and the bankers control all the education systems, the research laboratories, how they control industry, the large corporations, everything imaginable ultimately goes back to those who control the money. Follow the money and you'll see the root of evil and the root of control as it unfolds around us. Who controls the corporations? Once again, follow the money. Always leads back to the Rothschilds banking empire. But unfortunately, in our legal systems, corporations have more rights than living, breathing human beings. Think about that. This is unimaginable that something like this could even happen. Many people are shocked when they find out that every country in the world is registered as a corporation. It's not just countries. It's states, provinces, cities, Everything imaginable, the roads that we drive on are registered as corporations. Everything in our lives has been incorporated around us while we carry on and distracted by computer games and the news and who's screwing who and who won what game and what final is being played. While we've been distracted by the entertainment and the programming on our televisions, our world around us has been stolen from us and incorporated. And this is how, through the legal system and the corporations that have more rights than living, breathing human beings, we the people have become slaves to the corporations every step of the way. It scares the hell out of governments to have people in control of their own money. At which point you should really ask yourself, what kind of government is that? The whole thing about currency is that you don't need to know how it works unless it stops working. And when it stops working, everybody needs to know how it works because your wealth, your the future of your children, everything now depends on that. If we go to a future where digital cash is the only form of cash that exists, and I think we're heading in that direction very, very fast. I think within 20 years, uh, people who grow up 20 years from now will never see cash unless they visit a museum. Cashless society. Cashless society. Cashless society. Cashless society. Cashless society. Cashless society. If we go to that future, digital cash, we're at a crossroads because we have to choose between two possibilities. One is digital cash that's run by corporations that act not only as intermediaries in all of our payments, but also act as deputized members of law enforcement for every government and or intelligence agency and or dictator who co-opts them to their means. That type of finance is, takes the, the worst of surveillance capitalism and the worst of surveillance state, merges them together in this fascist dystopia where every transaction you ever make tell something about your habits, your politics, your associations, your movement, your physical location. On the one hand, 
all of this data gets collected and shared among all of the intelligence agencies and corporations or leaked. And on the other hand, if the people in power choose to, they can decide to debank you overnight. They turn off the switch. Now imagine what happens if your bank account is shut down and cash doesn't exist. Well, you can't eat. You can't buy food. Done. You can't use transportation. You can't rent an apartment. You, you, they can literally destroy your life in a second. And if you think this is crazy, this is happening today in China. They have a system called Sesame. It's, it's a, called a social credit score. And they use your social media postings to give everyone a score as to how well they toe the line of political correctness to the doctrine of the, lead, of the Communist Party. People who have a negative credit score on that system are denied access to public transportation. They're denied access to airlines, they're denied access to trains, they're denied access to jobs in the government, they're denied access to apartments to rent. They're doing that today. Now, today those people have cash to go back on. What happens when there's no cash? 